Okay, we're going to start talking about radial design. And things are about to get nerdy. Radial design is universal. It's uh, used all around the world by humans to, um, to focus and to meditate or um, reflect on their life, uh, trying to get back to a, a peaceful understanding of who they are, etc. Now, I, that was a generalization, um, and I'm sure you could find some arguments against any specific part of, of that, given one culture versus another, but uh, in Christianity, Buddhism, Hinduism, Shintoism, Native American, uh, pagan cultures uh, from uh, British Isles, like Stonehenge, like, for instance, uh, medicine wheels, mandalas, um, it goes on, sand painting, Sanskrit. There's so much that hinges on this idea that uh, a round form is something to focus your attention. There are natural things, of course, that have radial symmetry, like flowers, planets, galaxies, starfish, sea anemones, cells, bubbles, blah, blah, blah. Uh, and that radial symmetry is going to be um, used by us as humans today as we create. I'm just going to... Start this lesson by showing you how to fold paper. Now, I folded this paper already so that you can see where the folds go. The first step is to fold it in half. If you need to pause the video, feel free to do that. The second step is to fold it in half this way. And again, unfold it. The third step would be to fold it corner to corner. And you got to do this very carefully. You want these corners to line up perfectly. And then you're going to fold it across this way. So you're going to end up with something that looks like this. But we're only going to begin drawing our design in one of these triangles. What I'm calling a triangle is like this shape right here. So if I'm going to do a design inside of that triangle, I'm going to begin by making a couple of large shapes. I would say don't make any shape smaller than about a quarter. A coin. I would like to be able to easily redraw these if I need to. Hmm. This one may be a little bit smaller than a coin. That's okay. You want to be mindful of not only the space that you're drawing in, but the space that is created around your drawings. That's called the negative space. Okay. So I'm going to make a nice dark line around all of these shapes. Oops. Like that. All right, so I'm putting down graphite on the paper. when I go over each one of these lines. And the result is going to be that I can transfer it across. So I'm going to fold it on that crease that I've already made. And if you want to, you can use a pen or a pencil and you can draw on the back, but it gets a little bit messy. So I like to use the blunt end of a pen and I'm just going to go back and forth with kind of medium to heavy pressure. I want to be able to get this transferred onto the paper. That will make sense in just a second. Okay, so I am able to see the design through the paper. I don't know if the camera is picking it up, but I can see the design through the paper. And so I know exactly where I need to put this pressure in order to transfer the image. And I'm also holding the paper carefully so that it doesn't slip around a whole lot. 
So now I've transferred it from this side to this side. You may have to do this several times before you come up with a design that you really like, and that's okay. So if you transferred it and looked at it and you didn't like it, like maybe <laughs> this looks a little bit like an owl's face or now these kind of turned into eyebrows and eyes. If you don't like what you see, feel free to do a different one for the sake of the demonstration. Okay, so I'm going to go over all of the lines a third time on this one so I know I have plenty of graphite. See if there's any area that looks maybe like it's not going to transfer. That all looks good. So the first time I went across this way and I unfolded it. The next time is going to be folded across this direction. And now I can transfer both triangles at the same time. Again, I'm being really careful to hold the paper still and make sure what I'm trying to make sure that doesn't happen, I'm trying to make sure it doesn't slip this way or this way at all, that it's just perfectly locked on top of the opposite side there. And again, I can see through the paper a little bit to be able to tell where I need to put this pressure of the pin. Or medium to heavy pressure. If you don't put enough pressure, it won't transfer. And if you have an art pencil, like say a number 4B or 6B, that works better for um, putting the graphite down. So when you're going back over your lines after you've drawn it, using a heavier pencil with a, a darker lead can help a bunch. Okay, so now, looks like I need to do this area a little bit better. Now I can flip it open and see what I've transferred. So the process here is uh, not difficult, but a small mistake made in the beginning turns into a big mistake later after it's been reflected around um, across in every direction. So the goal is to try and not make those mistakes. especially early on. And if you do make a mistake, to be able to admit it early enough so that you can change and continue. So many of us get stubborn about admitting when we're wrong. And that's a difficult thing to overcome, even if it's our self sometimes. Okay, so this probably has enough graphite still to transfer. This has enough graphite to transfer. So now <clears throat> I can reflect it across this direction and I'm going to be filling up this side. So go across this way. And then I can take that And then there's one more to do, which would be this one.
And again, you're welcome to pause and rewind as many times as you like when you're watching a video, especially one that has an instruction like this. And I don't expect anybody to be in a major hurry. This one was done quickly for demonstration purposes. Have, if I were doing this um, to a complete work of art, I would most likely take a lot more time and do it much more carefully. But the general idea, I think the gist of this has been clearly communicated and I know that you can do it. So do your best, enjoy it, and hopefully you'll have a great product. Always remember to sign your work before you turn it in. You'll need to turn this in to Schoology. Remote learners, don't forget, you can always message me if you have a question or a concern. And even if I don't get back to you right away, I should get back to you soon enough. Well, that's it. Okay, in this section you're going to see me that I um, laid the paper down onto the tinted paper, the brown paper in the back, and then I'm transferring the entire square onto that paper using the same technique that we use to transfer each individual triangle to the other. So the care thing to be careful about is to make sure the paper is not moving. So you might want to put like a little mark in each corner on the brown paper to show you where it needs to be so it'll stay still. Or if it does move, you can move it right back. And then when you're done, you can kind of pull it back like I'm doing here and check, make sure the transfer is good. And then you're going to go back and lightly, and I mean lightly, go over the whole thing. Okay, blending colored pencil. Just using two different colored pencil colors to blend together. Make sure you're not mixing a primary and a secondary, or else you'll get brown. Okay, so you can see I'm using a black pencil. Earlier I had said I would use black pen uh, to go around some of the shapes, but black pencil seemed to work much better for going over pencil that you had already, already had down. So I stuck with that. And then this last little bit that I'm showing is blending. It's where you take one color, in this case I had yellow, and I just put red over it, and then I fade it out like I would a shadow. Makes a nice little gradient. Well, I hope you guys enjoy this lesson, and uh, the finished product is uh, sure to to come out looking great. It's a simple step-by-step -step process and as long as you're careful with uh, the beginning steps and then admit when you've made a mistake and try to correct it, you'll be good to go.